Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In our last video, we started looking at the AMQP protocol and its frame structure. In this video, we're going to take what we know about AMQP frames and RabbitMQ and see how these are used to achieve different types of functionality in RabbitMQ. For example, establishing a connection with a broker, publishing messages and consuming messages. So the first thing we'll look at is how we establish a connection to a broker or a server. This process involves sending a number of different method frames to and from the server. The first thing that happens in any connection is the client sends what's known as a protocol header to the server. This is the only data the client sends that is not formatted as a method. The protocol header usually consists of the uppercase letters A M Q P followed by a constant and then the protocol major version, the protocol minor version and the protocol revision. So this might result in something like AMQP0091. The server then either accepts or rejects the protocol header. If it rejects the protocol header, it writes a valid protocol header to the open TCP socket and then closes the socket. If it accepts the connection, it implements the protocol accordingly, in this case by responding with the connection start method frame. This method starts the connection negotiation process by telling the client the protocol version that the server proposes, along with a list of security mechanisms which the client can use for authentication. It also contains a list of server properties. When the client receives this, the client should select an SASL security mechanism and then respond with a connection start OK method frame. Next, the server will send the client a connection secure method. The SASL protocol works by exchanging challenges and responses until both peers have received sufficient information to authenticate with each other. The connection secure method challenges the client to provide more information. The client then responds to this by passing a connection secure OK method frame. This method attempts to authenticate passing a block of SASL data for the security mechanism at the server side. Once we're authenticated on both sides, the server will send a connection tune method frame to the client. The connection tune method data contains various different pieces of information around the server's connection, including the maximum amount of channels supported, the maximum frame size supported, and a desired heartbeat delay. The client should respond to this with a connection tune OK method frame which contains details again around the negotiated max number of channels, max number of frames and heartbeat delay. Once the connection has been authenticated and tuned, the final thing we need to do is open the connection itself. This is done by the client sending the server the connection open method frame. The server then responds with a connection open OK method frame, which signals to the client that the connection is ready for use. We can see from the connection negotiation and opening process that the communication between the client and the broker is mostly synchronous, i.e. it follows a kind of request response pattern. This is not always the case as we will see when we are consuming messages from the broker. Once we've opened a connection to the broker or the server, we may want to perform various different actions such as creating exchanges or queues or binding queues to exchanges. This is again achieved by sending various different method frames from client to server. For example, in the case of declaring a queue, we simply send a queue.declare method frame from the client to the server. If the queue was declared and created successfully, the server will respond with a queue.declare OK method frame. If there was some error when creating the queue, RabbitMQ will close the channel that the RPC request was issued on. This is a similar flow to other types of functionality such as declaring exchanges and binding queues which all follow a similar pattern with a declare and a declare OK and closing the channel if there is an error. A more complicated example which involves more than just simple method frames is publishing a message to a RabbitMQ exchange. This involves not only a method frame but also a content header frame and one or more body frames. First, the client will send the broker a simple basic publish method frame to indicate that is going to publish a method. Then, like we saw in the last video, it will publish a content header frame 
which contains details such as the size of the message that is about to be published. Finally, it will send one or more body frames which make up the actual content of the message. The number of body frames required depends both on the size of the message itself and the maximum size of message supported by the connection with RabbitMQ. The receiving or consuming of messages on our client is an interesting topic and has two main approaches in RabbitMQ. The first is using the basic get method. This method provides a direct access to the messages in a queue by using a synchronous dialog that is designed for specific types of application where synchronous functionality is more important than performance. The server will then respond either with a basic get OK method or a basic get empty method, depending on whether there is a message in the queue in question. This will then be followed by the message itself, which again will contain a content header frame and a number of body frames, depending on the size of the message. The client can then respond with a basic ACK to acknowledge the receipt of the message unless the no acknowledgement option was set in the get method. This is the end of the get message process. And if we want to receive more messages from the RabbitMQ broker, we need to send another basic get method frame. This then repeats this process we went through above and gets the newer messages that have been received on the broker since our last basic get. The basic get flow is not the ideal way of receiving messages from RabbitMQ. We should consume messages and not get them. And to do this, the client sends a basic consume method frame to the server. This method asks the server to start a consumer, which is a transient request for messages from a specific queue. Consumers last as long as the channel they were declared on or until the client cancels them. The broker then responds with a basic consume OK method frame. As and when messages arrive for that consumer on the broker, the consumer will send a basic deliver method frame to the client. This again will be followed by the content header frame and a number of body frames that we've seen in all the previous examples. Just like in the basic get flow, the client should acknowledge that the message has been received using the basic ACK method frame, unless the no ACK property has been set on the basic consume method frame sent earlier. When the broker receives another message which is relevant for this client or consumer, it will then send another basic deliver method frame and the content of the message again. This will continue until either the channel is closed or the client cancels the consume. So we've covered the basics of the AMQP protocol in this video and the last video. In the next couple of videos, we'll look at more complicated architectural patterns that can be achieved using RabbitMQ, and we'll use both Python and C Sharp for these. If you're enjoying these videos on RabbitMQ, don't forget to give them a like and subscribe to the channel.